Sagoli Swagwek. Hello everyone. Welcome to Ungwekwa, our foods. Today we're going to show you how to save seeds from our squash for planting. We hope to have more on our foods in future videos, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on notifications for new uploads. Squash have big jobs in our gardens. We plant the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, together. The corn grows tall and strong and serves as a support for the beans to climb. The beans provide nitrogen for the soil. The squash vines cover the ground, keeping the moisture in the soil and providing shade to prevent excessive weeds. Their prickly leaves and stems also help keep animals out. When we plant our garden in the spring, we're careful about choosing what to plant because we want to save as many seeds as possible for planting in following years. For the squash, there are several different families. If you plant two squash varieties from the same family, then they could cross-pollinate. Bees and other insects carry pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers. Then the female flowers can grow the squash. The main reason we want to avoid cross-pollination is so that our seeds that we plant and share with people will be true to type. This means that when people plant the seeds that we share, they know what to expect with how the plant should grow, look, and taste. This is especially important for new growers. If your squash does cross-pollinate, you can still save your seeds. They will just not be considered true to type and there's no telling what the next generation of squash will look like or taste like. One way to avoid cross-pollination is to hand pollinate the squash blossoms and isolate the female flowers. Since we chose not to hand pollinate, we decided to grow just one variety per squash family. The squash seeds that we're saving in this video are coming from an Oneida Hubbard squash. To decide what squash we want to save seeds from, we look for traits that we want to pass down in subsequent generations. We look for the largest, healthiest looking squash. When we have our squash picked out, we cut her in half. For some of these larger winter squashes, cutting can be a bit of a challenge. I use a very sharp knife and watch where my hands are at all times. I've heard stories about our squash getting so big, people had to throw them on their driveway to crack them open. Others had to use an ax to get inside them. Once we cut the squash open, we dig in, pulling the squash seeds out. As we're busy digging the squash seeds out, I'll tell you a quick seed saving story. In the later 1930s and early 1940s, Oneida people told stories about buying seeds and this being a hardship because money was scarce. People often spoke about going into debt acquiring seed for planting in the spring. In 1941, Oscar Archicot talked about how farming was historically done and how people used to always save their own seed for planting for the following spring. The kind of planning Oneida's done was how much to plant, which would last them all winter when harvested, and to have seed for next year's planting. It seems we are always relearning the lessons our ancestors have been teaching us. As we're pulling the squash insides out, we sift through them to find the plumpest seeds. If a seed is flat or misshapen, we don't save those seeds. Those seeds will not grow into a healthy plant. When we have all our seeds, we rinse them off a bit in cool water and pick out any squash chunks. Then we can put them in some water to soak for a few hours. This will help loosen any remaining squash pieces from the seeds. After we soak the seeds for a few hours, we pull out any remaining squash pieces and spread the seeds out on a brown paper grocery bag. We let them sit for a couple days, then pluck them off and move them around a bit to help them dry even more. Even though the seeds might look dry, they should still sit out and dry some more. We keep ours out for a few weeks. If you put them away too soon, they could mold. We like to store our seeds in jars in the basement. We keep them out of the sun and away from too much dampness. These seeds were not meant to sit on a shelf as a collectible. They are meant to be planted so they can fulfill their responsibilities to help nourish our bodies and minds and continue their lines of seeds for the next generations. If you haven't already done so, check out our YouTube channel for videos about planting squash in mounds, cooking squash in three sisters soup, and braiding dried squash for long-term storage. We are still learning about our foods. People have different ways of growing our foods. We are sharing the way we learned how. One of the most amazing parts about this journey to get to know our foods better is that it is connecting us to so many people throughout the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and throughout Indian Country. If you have any methods you want to share, please feel free to drop them in the comments or send us an email. 
Yawa, Danito.